triangle again, but not just about it, because uh, this time I wanted to show you uh, what is actually uh, a point of my work uh, and what was most inspiring for me uh, by these two summer schools. I'm proud to say that I'm the assistant of both summer schools in Eger and Belgrade, <coughs> and the second one is uh, special for me because I was rewarded, as you all know, uh, uh, for the best lecture in the summer school. I have a beautiful painting, and uh, now I'm very motivated. I'm even more trying to do uh, with my students, connecting visuality and mathematics, and I think that both me <coughs> and my students will be motivated by that. Uh, we all see what fractal size uh, are, and I said uh, before, why the, why the pupils like them? So, to go on, uh, I will um, just uh, take uh, uh, time to tell you that later on I found this picture uh, showing that we can make Sierpinski triangles by two ways, uh, subtracting the part of it and adding a part of it. So, uh, when I found this picture, I thought that it was very interesting, but text was more, even more interesting. They're talking which way you use uh, arts, uh, artistics to make triangles and which way use teachers of mathematics when they talk about triangles. They say <coughs> we are using this part as mat mathematicians because we uh, use it to count something or to teach children all the things we said before, fractions and uh, symmetry, uh, similarity and so on. But artists actually, they say, use this one because sometimes they start with this big uh, picture and uh, they don't uh, get what they want, but this way they can use it to implement it in their work. I don't know if that's right, we can talk about it, but I can tell you that my students did this on the whiteboard. I'm telling you this again because I was very proud. And thinking about it, because uh, they did it, they were boring. You know, they were having so much papers. Cutting, <coughs> connecting, cutting, connecting, then gluing. In, in the beginning, it was a very hard uh, job for a uh, small part of kids. They started <coughs> drawing this. I, I think that actually they need to draw something. They need to see mathematics. I was the one who asked them to count, and they did it. But at the first moment, the first uh, part of uh, their uh, job was to just start drawing and find beauty in it. Uh, tetrahedron is something that we can use uh, in many grades. Uh, in the sixth grade, we use its net. In the seventh grade, especially, because we have Pythagorean theorem and fractals also. But, uh, this is, uh, for me, a very interesting pi uh, picture because we can talk about illusion. Is this point in or out? I love to use illusions uh, in my classes because we can talk about it. We can see its artistic side, but also uh, we can go on and do mathematics with the kids who are interested, who are involved. And they all get involved when you find an illusion because that's the point where they are, in many cases, better than me. They feel good when they find an illusion that I couldn't, or make it, or have an idea that I didn't. Uh, the idea was, as I said before, something that uh, was part of my life. And I've been thinking since uh, summer school till yesterday, uh, how the ideas come to us. For example, this is something that uh, I saw when I was a kid, so visuality. Or that sometimes it's something that I saw in the internet, so again visuality. And when I want the kids to uh, be the base of my uh, ideas, I ask them what they love, what they want to see, what they love to hear. So again, some sort of visuality. And uh, it seems that we can have our good classes without it. When we find what they are interested in, we can make uh, this uh, explore, we can ask them to investigate. That is very important. 
we really don't have a time in our classes to ask uh, children to investigate. I can give them five minutes, ten minutes, and that's all. I do the rest of the job explaining and then letting them uh, do the same with the tasks uh, when they go home. But that initial uh, investigation, I have no time to give them. So, Siafinski does it as a tool. Uh, as I said, it started with a lot of papers. I'm glad you all know how much work it is. Cutting, <laughs> gluing, and again, but from this point on, they are feeling better. Uh, at the beginning, actually, they always said, yes, we want. When they see how much work it is, they expect me to cut all the things. And <coughs> that's not done, it's OK, let's start. But from this point, they feel good, because they had made something. And from this point, even better, we have 16, 4, and now we are going to connect. I, from these two pictures, I like this one very much. Uh, I, I don't know uh, if you talk with kids about it, but uh, children don't read comics. Not to talk about making, they are not making it at all, but they didn't read comics. A few of them sometimes in the generation, but they actually no. They're also not making uh, good photographs, photography. They're making a lot of pictures on cell phones, etc., but with no artistic value. I can say that I know what's a good artistic value of some photography, but actually they're not interested in it at all. And for me, this was really great. The idea to make it, it was, this boy was taking a picture in the stars. Some of them are mine, but really beautiful. And the exhibition. Uh, actually, it's very important to make exhibitions in school because children feel good. They love to show what they did. And they love to write who made it. They feel good about it. Sierpinski Triangle, a few kids from sixth grade did it, and they learned from their mistakes. It's not easy for them to find a mistake. If you tell them, okay, some part of it, you did it uh, too much, you may uh, put uh, too much triangles in the middle, they would uh, take it away and that's not the point. But if you ask them to find what was wrong, they put that for the sixth grade students is really a hard task. And also, fractals are going to be very famous soon. Oh, let's grab him. Laura, you know this picture, as I guess. I wanted to show uh, a shadow of our own. This is Liliana <laughs> Hanarich holding it. And uh, last time I also said where we can use it. It's a huge range. It's not written here, but we can take them to. Uh, call children for coding because they actually are not using uh, uh, they're using <coughs> computers but they're not coding and they're not interested in that and uh, it's interesting to see that uh, shadow it's really beautiful we can also make it to see triangle or square and to use it uh, why I wanted to talk again about Sierpinski because you uh, loved it this <coughs> summer it was made I don't know who does this picture, maybe, maybe some of you, but it's really beautiful and you enjoy it. Can you imagine how much kids enjoy it? And now I'm going to show you something that's on the site uh, about l mm, two lessons that we had to present uh, from the first summer school. And again, idea. Uh, you see, uh, for the fifth grade students, it's okay to teach them. They are uh, new to all of us. We are uh, using their knowledge, which is not so big, and then starting very hard to put a knowledge in their head. Somewhere in between the eighth grade, they are uh, simply uh, students who know mathematics or don't know mathematics. And that's the time when they mostly ask, what do I need that for? And I said, so you can make a good uh, scientist uh, did, or to make, uh, to count how much uh, paint you need. 
And always they ask, okay, so what do I need that? If I need it, I'm going to go to internet and use it. Why do I need to learn all this? Leave me alone. And I realized that even showing them these beautiful pictures is not enough. They need to feel that they did something. They actually have to find themselves as something, uh, something new. They are going to work in their doing their life and they need to find the mathematics in their future job. So, this is a design of lamps and I'm growing the designers, maybe, artists. Uh, this was the, their task to um, count the cube, its volume and area, etc. and to make pop art. And this was uh, not uh, connected with mathematics at the moment because this was made for uh, our uh, exhibition of Easter eggs we had in school. And one student drew this. Uh, they noticed where to find a part. They also wanted to play Picado in our class. They said, I know that it's a part, let's play Picado. I said, it's not enough. They said, yes, but I know those are circles. I can count its area. If I count its area, can we play a piccado? So it's very interesting what they can use. They're still kids. I use Soma Cube. It's very interesting because it's a 3D uh, tangram, seven parts which have to be connected. They were using origami technique to make it and connect it. Also, we found these uh, boxes and connected some parts of it. So it's not very beautiful, but it's very interesting for them to recycle. And now, this is something uh, they did without me asking them. They are playing Minecraft uh, in their spare time. And they are using Minecraft to solve solar cube. It was very interesting for me because uh, they are actually doing mathematics out of their class. Imagine eight great kids doing mathematics in the spare time. It's very rare to see. They are going to break it now, just to show that inside is not empty. And I'm so proud they did this, playing a game. Okay, uh, visioners, because they are show, uh, seeing an illusion. This is the Belgrade Square. Uh, I don't know if you saw that illusion. Uh, it's uh, down tiles are uh, mm -hmm. composed. Nicola Pasha Square, yes. Actually, they uh, I didn't tell them which square it was. I wanted them to investigate, to walk Belgrade and find it. Then to find out how to present that illusion to the others. And actually, they were investigating about a share. They are scientists. This <coughs> is an optical bench. We had uh, this picture with priests, because we were uh, learning about priests at that time, but we were also very interested in all the parts of that optical bench. And in the end, I must say that I didn't uh, read this book. Actually, the, that book is not, as far as I know, not uh, uh, translated in Serbian. And it's not always easy to follow it in English, but I like the, this. Actually, I wanted to tell you that idea was very important for me, and uh, it was uh, we were talking about connecting arts and mathematics. And uh, Ruth said something that we can uh, leave kinetic, uh, mathematics alone. And actually, in elementary school, that is very true. They're still kids and we have to know that, uh, I don't know if anyone else is from primary school, but when we get kids they are simply not all interested enough. They are, some of them are much more interested in art and we have really to realize that we must offer them a different ways to learn mathematics 
So from elementary school, we have pushed them in secondary and say, yes, you know where are you going. Since they, they don't know, they go and after exam, they choose school <coughs> with friends and I don't know what. So we have to help them realize what they want and what they are interested in. 